situated roughly in the middle of Victoria's picturesque Mornington Peninsula, is rural Mooradak, home to wineries, a steam train preservation society and a number of farms. And one of those farms has a special significance for its owner, professional horticulturalist Marcel Swanson. So what's the history with this actual site? My mother and father used to live in Dramana and when they'd be driving up to the city, my mum always loved the look of this block of land. And when it came up for sale, mum said, that's it, that's where we're going to set up our lives. After leaving her childhood home and moving to Sydney for a while, Marcel and her husband Carl decided to return to the peninsula and raise a family. We were looking at farms and my mum said, why don't you come here to this farm? Um, she wanted to stay here, but she's getting older, and so she wanted the security of having us around. And we suddenly thought, well, yeah, I can't imagine a better place to raise our kids. Do you think the children appreciate this lifestyle? It's funny, I'm, I'm not sure because it's what they know now. And at times when we go somewhere else, they say little quirky things like, how come there are no herbs in this garden? And they do a lot of cooking themselves, and so they do notice that. So, April, what do you like about living on the farm? Uh, well, the space and, like, how we grow our own stuff. Like, we don't have to go to the supermarket. We can just, like, go out to the veggie garden. Are you allowed to go and pick anything you want at any time? Yeah, yeah when we're hungry, we just go outside and eat it. It's yeah. good. What's your favourite thing in the garden? When I'm on the trampoline, when I'm finished on the trampoline, there's the peach tree right next to it, so I just grab one and I'm way past. <laughs> We've got a collection of fruit and vegetables, everything from chestnut trees and macadamias right through to stone fruits and apples, pears and cherries. But this is mainly the stone fruit orchard. Yeah. Unfortunately, as you can see, this tree is enormous, so netting it's become problematic. So generally we share most of this crop with the chooks. In hindsight, I would have preferred to have maybe espaliered the trees. It would have given us much easier space to be able to net. It would have provided protection for the chooks as well as for the fruit. In the veggie garden, obviously, it's very seasonal and we grow whatever we need to at the time. I've learned over the years to only grow what we're going to harvest and use. When I first started, I'd grow everything that was fabulous and weird, but if we're not going to use it in the kitchen, it's just a waste of space. So, realistically now, we just really grow the stuff that we love to eat. It looks really good. What have you got in here? Tomatoes, of course. Obviously, tomatoes, zucchini, spaghetti squash, corn. I love corn at this time yes, of year to be able to pick yeah. it straight from the garden. It's so sweet. It's wonderful. Um, Chilies, Chilies, of course. And April loves capsicums, especially. Oh. So I've got the little mini sweet capsicum that she can put straight in her lunch. And do they, the kids come and plant these? They've helped me plant some, yeah. they've had to help me prune some, and they definitely eat everything. <laughs> I like these square boxes. The raised boxes are really good. They are. Well, I thought I'd planned everything beautifully, but I was looking at aesthetics probably more than I was looking at practicality. I think long, narrow beds ah. would have been much better in hindsight, just as I'm getting older and yeah. my back is getting sore. Ah. I just think reaching yep. into the middle, and I thought I'd calculated it perfectly, but I'm noticing I probably was perfect 10 years ago, <laughs> and, <laughs> and yes. now I would have long, narrow beds, and I suppose that's why so many gardens are set up like that. Yeah. And it's, it's to do with being practical. Yes. You've got quite a collection of herbs right near the kitchen. Nice and easy for access, for cooking. I, I can't imagine not cooking with fresh herbs. The flavour's amazing. We have our staples right near the house at the back door. The things we don't use very often, obviously, we've sighted them around the garden. So the juniper. It's a yeah. hardy old thing though, isn't it? It is, and in fact, everyone always asks if we're making gin, but of course we're not. We're using it for flavouring. When we make marinades and brine mm. for meats, it's the most amazing subtle flavour that comes through. It's just divine. It's so great to be able to pick it ourselves, because most junipers are actually grown overseas, so mm. to have our own like this, it's great. And being a gardener, you of course had to have some flowers in amongst everything. Yeah, I did. Because we don't water anything here, I really have to be careful what I plant. So it really has to be hardy, drought tolerant and be able to survive with no care. <laughs> all the foliage colours and yes. forms and it looks yeah. great all year exactly. round. Yeah. But now I am appreciating yeah. all the different yeah, the perennials yeah. Yeah. and what they can bring in such a short amount of time. Yeah. I think it's amazing. And also they bring in the, 
bees and the beneficial yeah. insects. That's right. I realised how important it was to have food for them. So most of the flowers around the farm are there as bee food, to be fair, and of course a few for a vase. And what about the animals? So we have quite a collection of animals from um, obviously the sheep, like alpaca, the, the cattle, guinea fowl, ducks, chickens, quite a menagerie, I suppose. They look pretty happy, these chooks. They are pretty happy. I think they get all the scraps from the veggie garden. They turn them over here to make good soil and nutrients for the fruit trees. And we must admit, we've been growing and growing and gathering different varieties because we're going to enter them in the local agricultural show. Oh, you're a goal winner then, aren't you? We hope so. Part of the process and I think that's the main thing. Every single one of us is involved from April through to my mum and I think that the fact that we are all part of this journey and we're sharing it together, it makes it all so much more worthwhile and we encourage each other and support each other to the point where I can't imagine living any other way.